Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Belle again, and today is the Roads to Fact-Checking and Research. We're going to go through some different methods of researching and confirming news items. We'll go through and talk about how to effectively search for information and some tips on stuff like that. We're going to let some of your questions guide us through this, and we're going to start with the one that prompted this deep dive into the topic. Do you use Bo's whiteboard to do research like he did, or do you have your own process? If you have your own process, what is it? I definitely do not use the whiteboard. Um, his method of read literally everything and then start scribbling notes in different colors um, with circles and lines connecting events is something that only works if you process information the way that he does. Um, it, to me, it looks like something out of a movie about conspiracy theories. It's, it's overwhelming. Um, my research methods are more how I charted as a nurse. Um, they're organized and methodical. I tap notes into my laptop and I flip back and forth between um, a bunch of tabs in my browser to confirm and reconfirm information. Um, then if needed, I'll call somebody to get some insight into a topic. And then once I have the information, I try to find the part that is going to be overlooked or sensationalized or add the additional context that's often missing. Um, and then I work out what I'm going to say, and then the whole thing goes into a final fact check. Uh, you've given more links in the last three weeks than Bo has in the last three years. I truly appreciate that, and I even understand why Bo did it the way he did. But sometimes when you quote something, I have a hard time finding the quote. It takes forever to find the specific quote so I can show my dad. He's, he's got a good heart, but he really did buy into Trump's garbage. He's my little D-Rad project, and it's working. But I have to show him in black and white. Is there an easy way to find the quotes you use? Yes, and it's easier than you think. Take whatever the quote is and find the most unusual phrasing in it. And then put that part of the quote in quotation marks in the search bar. If you, if you search for go to the moon, you'll get a bunch of random results. If you search for we chose to go to the moon in quotations, you'll get Kennedy's speech. You could probably type in we chose to go to the moon without quotation marks and still get it. But that won't be the case with um, the newer quotes. So putting the phrase in quotes tells most search engines that it needs to have all those words in that order. So look for a weird phrase and put it in quotation marks. Um, some other symbols that are useful um, in searching are put a plus sign before the word. Um, and that means the result must have that word in it. And then a minus sign before a word means that it can't have that word. So an example of that, if you're looking up the word Apache, you'll get results about both natives and helicopters. If you search for Apache minus helicopter, you just get information on natives. Um, another one that I use a lot is the asterisk. Um, that serves as an unknown. So I find that useful when looking up confirming like numbers. So it's asterisk, people fell off a bridge in any town USA in, quotate, in quotation marks. You'll, it'll, it will give you any conflicting reports as to the number of people involved. Um, it's also useful if you can't remember an exact quote. If you put the asterisk in place of a missing word, um, for example, we asterisk to go to the moon um, in quotation marks, it will probably give you Kennedy's speech. Um, there are a bunch of other symbols, but those are the ones that I use the most. Um, the asterisk, the plus, and the minus. Um, Google also has a little button um, below the search bar that's for advanced searches. Uh, that lets you really refine your search where you can look up time ranges, uh, websites, domains, and you have a bunch of other options. 
how do I find stats and studies? I thought that was something Bo was just really good at, but the video you did on tariffs made me realize you just know how to do something I don't. Um, because of the whole whiteboard thing, uh, people always joke about Bo being like Dr. House. There's another way they're similar. House would always say patients lie. Bo will always say politicians lie. Um, it's, it's just a routine that facts and figures provided by politicians, they're usually skewed toward their side. Um, so you want to check them. And sometimes they're off and it's just like normal politics, but then sometimes they're really out there. Um, how you can tell the difference. There's a bunch of watchdog groups and nonprofits uh, monitoring and discussing just about every issue under the sun. So if you have watchdog groups that are ideologically not aligned or even opposed, and they're both calling it bad, like what happened in the Trump tax video you mentioned, it means it's probably wrong on a level that exceeds normal politics. Um, if you're not familiar with all the watchdogs and think tanks out there, um, you can use Google's advanced search, um, that advanced search feature, and limit your results to .org or .edu. It's not a surefire way to weed out bad sites, but it's definitely a good starting point. Mm. I have a question. I don't mean this to sound like an accusation, but I'm just wondering how you decide where to cut off quotes. Sometimes people on YouTube will give giant quotes. Sometimes they will give you just tiny bits. You do both. Sometimes it's a really long quote, which I prefer. And sometimes it's really short, which makes me feel like it could be taken out of context. I haven't caught you doing that, but I've just been conditioned to assume short quotes are out of context. Um, I use the shortest quote possible to convey the actual meaning in context. Sometimes that requires paragraphs and sometimes it's just a few words. I always try to give context, but I'm a person. So just like every other person out there doing this, you can use the search technique we talked about earlier, um, to pull the full quote. Uh, the other way to do this, um, is to search for a popular quote from a speech or a comment on YouTube with the word full. And sometimes you can find a video of a person saying it. And I never take offense to people fact checking. In fact, it's highly encouraged. Um, Bo always used to talk about how AP News is a neutral source. And he used to explain why they're better than, say, NBC or MSNBC. Now they did a bit of a whoopsie with their headlines about the RNC and DNC. Okay, so one headline says, Fact Focus, a look at claims made at the Republican National Convention as Trump accepts nomination. The other says, Fact Focus, a look back at some of the questionable claims made during the Democratic Democratic Convention. Okay, well, headlines aren't always written by the same people, and those two articles were separated by quite a bit of time. Um, there's two whoopsies here, really. One could say the addition of the word questionable is bias. You could also say that naming Trump and not Harris was bias, but it's a fact check. If claims weren't questionable, they wouldn't be in there. Um, so when we open the articles, you get a feel of things. Um, in the fact check of the Democratic Convention, only one of the items is fact checking Harris. Uh, in the Republican Convention fact check, only one of the fact checks is not Trump. That explains why he's named and she isn't. Now, let's take a look at the first paragraph of each article for the Democratic Convention. The Democrats' star-studded four-day convention drew to a close as Vice President Kamala Harris accepted the party's nomination for president. The festivities were high on entertainment and praise for Harris and her running mate Tim Walls, 
but while most speakers stuck to the script and the facts, the convention was not without false information or statements that begged for additional context. Now for the Republican Party. As former President Donald Trump accepted the Republican presidential nomination on Thursday, he laid out his vision for running the country. He painted a dire picture of the state of the U.S. and outlined a range of actions he planned to take, but his comments were marked with a myriad of false and misleading information that distorted the facts around immigration, the U.S. economy, and his previous accomplishments. The AP is not without issue, but generally they play it pretty straight. A Republican could easily take the first paragraph of each article and claim the bias is against them, not in favor of them. Um, also knowing Bo, his real praise of the AP isn't that they treat both sides the same, but that they treat them fairly. And above all Bo, for Bo, it's that they're, they're pretty accurate. He doesn't believe outlets or journalists exist that don't have at least some bias. Okay, so that's going to wrap up this installment. And today I learned the Thursday episode doesn't actually have a special name. So, but there you have it. Some of the ways um, for you to find a little more information, a little more context, and having the right information will make all the difference. Y'all have a good day.